Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Day 2 podcast today. Today's episode, Copy That, The Art of Writing Amazon Copy That Converts. In this day and age, we listen constantly to rich people and billionaires saying the data is everything. It's the only thing. And to some degree, they're right. It's the new oil. It's the new fortunes have been built on data, etc. However, human beings need and love a good story. It's hardwired in their DNA. It's been happening for a millennia and it will not stop into the future. Consumers also love a great story. And if you're not telling a compelling story that gets your consumer to trust you, to add your item to cart and to give you their credit card, then you're not winning in today's game. I'm Jason Boyce, founder and CEO of Avenue 7 Media and host of the Day 2 Podcast. With me today is Shannon Roddy, Amazon strategist, Amazon educator, and biz dev extraordinaire for Avenue 7 Media. Shannon, how are you doing today? I'm doing really great because I just got off a call with another potential client and I just love the stories that we get to engage with our clients in, even as we're talking to them about the possibility of working with them and how to better tell their brand story on Amazon. So I'm, I'm jazzed and excited. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, Shannon, it's a hundred supposed to be 106 degrees here in LA today. So <laughs> hopefully we can get through this episode before the power goes out as California <laughs> likes to do when everyone's running their air conditioner. Uh, you would think after yeah. 30 years, they would have figured that problem out, but they don't. But look, I, you know, I love telling, engaging, authentic stories. And I think Amazon presents a great opportunity for brands to tell their story, to tell the story of each product. I've even always felt that a great product has a soul and sometimes you just have to find it. There's this great Michelangelo story. Someone asked me, Michelangelo, how do you, how do you envision, you know, these, these amazing marble sculptures? And he says, I, I don't envision it. I just look into the stone and I chip away the excess and the beauty inside the stone reveals itself. I feel the same way about pro products. And I think that each product has a story to tell. And I've had a lot of teachers in my journey in terms of working on copy and creating great products and telling stories. Rick Cesari is one of those. In fact, Shannon, I have good news. Rick's going to join us for an episode in the coming weeks. Yes. I just contacted him and he's going to come on and talk about uh, great stuff about video and video production. He's been Can't cracking the code on video long before uh, Amazon even existed. So I'm looking forward to having my good friend and co-author of the Amazon Jungle on in a, in a week or two. But he's always taught me, Shannon, and we've talked about this together a lot. Mm -hmm. Features tell, but benefits sell. And I totally agree with that. And it's really part of getting to the soul and the nature and the understanding of what a product is so that you can communicate that to the potential buyer. Question number one, Shannon, Shannon there are a lot of places uh, to display copy on Amazon these days and, and copy incorporates a ton of different elements. What do you mm -hmm. see as some of these elements and what are some of these key placements that we'll talk about in this episode? Yeah. So it's really like we talk about an art plus a science. And you have to remember you're writing for an Amazon algorithm and you're writing for your customer on the other side. And so the handful of things that you have to include, number one is SEO keyword research. You know, you've got to include SEO. If you haven't heard our, our podcast on SEO, go back a couple episodes and listen to that. Brand messaging. And that's really the authentic tone and voice of the brand. You want to communicate that through all of your content, including the visuals. I mean, you know, images uh, are associated with feelings. And so we want to sort of convey the brand messaging through copy and visuals. Um, like you mentioned, features and benefits. It's really important to talk about the specific features of the product, but even more so, what benefits do they offer to the customer? But we also have to do all of that while standing in line with Amazon policy and Amazon style guidelines. And I want to take a second, Jason, just to delineate those. Amazon style guidelines are recommendations on how you should do certain things in your listing, like how long the title should be, what things you can do for your primary product image, copy, and so forth. Style guide violations are typically just result in a suppressed listing, meaning you can easily go in and fix it. But it is important to sort of stay within the style guidelines. Policy violations can be a little bit more severe and a little more complicated to undo. So I kind of want to just separate both of those, put them on the table. But you have to do all of those at the same time. SEO, brand messaging, features, benefits, style guidelines, and policy in order to have good listings. And you know, the main pieces, obviously, we talked about product features 
and the, the product title, which is probably one of the most important parts of the product. We talked about uh, primary product images with Danielle Boltzmann on our last episode and amazing insight there. And so the primary product image and additional Im images, as well as the A-plus content, Amazon released premium A-plus content, which has been shown to increase conversion significantly, and also video. So there's all these great places that we can Im import and sort of inject and infuse all those different elements, but it's got to be done with all of those things in mind all at the same time. So there's some juggling that has to happen. And, and you know, and thanks for referencing those previous episodes. I love the uh, interview that we had with Daniela offering such great visual content uh, recommendations for brand owners. And then also following those guidelines. The last thing you want to have happen, Shannon, is you, if you don't follow those guidelines, is you, you create this amazing copy that moves consumers that they love, that really tells a great story, only to have your listing suppressed and never see this, the light of day. And you know, mm -hmm. we had we had several episodes about product availability, including buy box suppression and search suppression. So, mm -hmm. so you're right. This is a very, it's kind of like juggling on a unicycle type of thing <laughs> that you have to you have to incorporate all of these different elements and be good at all of them. Um, you know, at its core, Shannon. You know, technical aspects aside, just for a second. Uh, Rick Cesare, my my co-author of the Amazon Jungle Book and amazing DirecTV uh, legend, marketing legend. And, and by the way, he's going to be joining us on an episode later, um, either next week or the following week. So I'm really excited to have him on and talk about video for our content uh, producers here. But, um, you know, what he always has told me, Shannon, is features tell and benefits sell. Right. So right. it's always important to know the length, height, width, the features of the product, what it does. But it's more important to answer the question, what's in it for me when I add to cart, right? If I give you my credit card, what am I going to get in return? And the benefits are what tells that story. Can you think of any examples that highlight what Rick talks about in as we work with our clients? I, th I think, again, remembering why people buy that there's a, there's a couple different things. I've sort of looked at these from different angles. Number one is a necessity. People buy out of necessity. I actually, like, I really actually need this product. Um, the other part is I've run out of toothpaste. I need toothpaste tomorrow. You got to get toothpaste. The other is convenience. How will this make my life easier? Right. Another one, and, and this is actually goes back to my my friend Jen Harada. I was in New York. I visited New York for a podcast recording, and everybody wears Apple AirPods. I mean, everybody. And I said, Jen, why are they so popular? He goes, it's a status symbol. Mm -hmm. And and so sometimes buy, people buy things not because they need them and not because they're more convenient, but because it's a status symbol, right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes they do them, you know, they buy it for, for lifestyle. Sometimes they buy things for health. And so sort of there's understanding that, that human element, that there is a deep human desire to achieve something and your product will help them do that. And telling that story, I think, is the most important thing you can do in a listing. People think, well, there's not really a story to my product. But, well, there is. There is a story to your product. And it's your job as a brand owner to figure that out. What is the customer really buying? Are they buying comfort? Are they buying you know, ease, ease of use or, or efficiency? Or are they buying status? And that really drastically determines how you convey that story and how you sell that product. Yeah, that, that's a great point, Shannon. And I would sum that up as, is, how does this make my life better? Maybe that makes, mm -hmm. it makes me feel better about myself. It makes my life more convenient or it literally solves a problem for me that I need to get solved. So uh, those yeah. are great, great elements. Now, you know, here at Avenue 7, research is really important to every listing we do. Uh, why is it important, Shannon? And what are some of the things that brands should do before they put pen to paper? <clears throat> you know, you talked about in the beginning, Jason, this sort of idea of data versus stories. And really what we want to do is we want to mine data to help us better tell better stories. And so we have a very exhaustive process that we go through that not only determines who our target audience is, and, and sort of a customer avatar, but often, what are the multiple avatars? Because there's typically more than one type of customer buying your product. And a lot of people say, you know, we ask people all the time, who's your audience? And they're like, everybody, right? Everybody <laughs> is not your target customer, right? So we actually break it down into a handful of different avatars. And that 
will then provide insight for our graphics team and our copy team in terms of who they are writing for and how they position the listing and the product. And the research also informs us, you know, what, what price point people are willing to pay, you know, what, you know, again, what that need is that they're looking to satisfy and fulfill. Because even with those different avatars, you may have somebody who's just buying this for comfort and ease of life and somebody else who's buying out of necessity. One of the most valuable places to get customer research is actually on Amazon. And it is going through either competitor product reviews or if you have a listing that has been on Amazon for a long time and you are looking to iterate your product, which again, we talk about all the time, go back and see what are customers saying? What do they love about a product? What do they hate about a product? What do they wish about a product was different? And I'll give you a really simple example. We have a sound machine that we bought and they're cheap $20, you know, I, I, don't, I won't say the brand because I don't want to get sued for libel, but you know, you turn the sound machine on, it just, it's a really nice white noise. And our entire family has gotten used to this type of sound machine. It works, you know, for our families. The problem is after about two years, that little knob that you adjust the volume and you turn it on and off goes out and it doesn't work anymore. And so you're in the middle of the night and all of a sudden the sound machine just stops and goes off. And uh -huh. that has to be a 20 cent switch, you know, a little dial knob that turns it on and off and adjusts the volume. And after years, they have not improved it. Now, it could be intentional. They want to resell. But basically, what we did is, is we said, screw you. We're buying a better quality product. It's twice as much, but it's going to last longer. And so... Did there you happen to read the reviews for that product or the one star reviews? <laughs> no, you but I didn't buy it on Amazon. <laughs> Did you see it? Oh, okay. You didn't buy it on Amazon. Interesting. Okay. No, that was a retail purchase. <laughs> but 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 there is an element where there is so much value and there's actually a lot of places. And if, you, if you're a brand owner, there are so many places that you can capture data and feedback. So it's not just the product reviews. Look at the comments and the customer returns. Look at stuff that people put in seller feedback. I know it's not supposed to go in seller feedback, but it shows up all the time. Look at stuff in buyer seller messaging and you'll begin to see trends and data and say, look, if we make these improvements, if we make these changes, we're not only going to be able to create a better product, but we're going to be able to sell a better experience. And for me, that's the cloud. Totally agree. And you know, we've talked about this a lot, Shannon that those reviews, when a customer is willing to complain about your product, you should thank them. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't take it personally and you should thank them. And if there's a theme of other shoppers who are having the yeah. same complaint, that's as good as, that's a good a product research as you need, right? To develop yeah. the next iteration of your product, the next time you need to place that order and fix that little 20 cent knob. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I used to love it when I would launch a new product and then get 30, 40, 50 reviews and a theme would evolve. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the air, in the, you know, I used to sell air hockey tables among other things in the sporting goods space. And I used to love when I would get specific feedback about a dead corner or, you know, it's hard to level my table because I would take that back to the product engineers and say, Hey, we got a problem. Yeah. We've got, you know, three, four, six, 12 customers who are having the same problem. We need to fix it. Speaking of copy, whenever we would fix it, and the new product landed and we were confident that that issue was resolved, we would put in the listing new and improved for 20, whatever, 2000, the year 2000 X. And, um, and, and, and we would call out the improvement in the feature that we fixed mm -hmm. right in the listing, because that way, when the customer saw the older one star reviews, that there was a problem, then they go to the listing and see that the brand was it's listening to the consumers and fixed it sales mm -hmm. grew exponentially greater. So it's part of the game. It's part of the iterative process that consumer driven innovation that helps drive research and helps you identify some of the things that need to be uh, discovered before putting pen to paper. I'll tell you another good one is questions and answers, you know, going through and looking at the questions that consumers are asking about your listing before they make their purchase decision. And I, and sometimes you'll see a question that's already answered in the listing. So that's just, you know, that's just somebody's who doesn't want to do the reading or doesn't want to do their research on, on the listing, but it's a great area <laughs> to find out what question needs to be answered in your copy, yeah. especially if that question gets a lot of love and, and, and gets asked repeatedly. So really, really good yeah. stuff. So Shannon, now I'd like to dive into some of the nuts and bolts you know, um, product titles. It's one of the first things that somebody sees on the search yeah. results page, at least that shortened title. It's, um, it's how you know if your search 
is spitting back good results by reading what's in there. It's how you know if you're looking and, or you're willing to invest in the click to learn more about this product. How important are product titles uh, in terms of copy? And what are some tricks, not tricks, but what are some best practices, I should yeah. say, in order to, to, to yeah. get your best bang for the product title buck? Yeah, titles, in my opinion, are one of the most important things that you can do to optimize your listing that will probably have a greater impact on the life of your listing than anything else you do, aside from off Amazon promotion and aggressive advertising. It really is for that foundational piece. It is one of the most important pieces. Um, like you said, it's the first thing people see in search results. So it can drastically increase click-through rate, for example, with a well-optimized title. Um, again, we're, we're going to talk about the style guidelines. Amazon recommends you put your brand first. I get a lot of pushback against this, Jason, and I'm kind of sick of it. People say, oh, I don't want to put my brand first because Amazon weights the keywords that are closer to the front of the title more heavily. So I'll just go kind of sneak the brand to the back of the, uh, of the title. And I'm like, look, we, we talk about being a branding agency. Like we want to tell your brand story. We want to promote your brand. Why in the world would you not want to put your brand first? Does Coca-Cola ever try to hide who they are and you know change their colors and hide their logo? Of course not. You start with the brand because you want to build a brand experience. Then you do your most highly searched relevant SEO keyword term. For the remainder of the title, Jason, we're doing a handful of things. Number one, we're typically calling out some unique value propositions. Why is your product different or better than competitors? As well as sprinkling some additional search terms in there. And again, we can go back to the SEO episode. What are some alternate ways that customers are searching for this product? But some of the other things that are really important specifically for food products are things like, is it vegan? Is it gluten-free, right? Those are things that customers are searching and, and you want to organically rank for those. Got to be in the title as well as some uh, you know, product specs. or you know, So in, in some cases, you want to have measurements. If you've got a supplement, people want to know. What kind of product is it? Is it a capsule? Is it a pill? Is it a gel? You know, you know, is it a liquid? And how many I get, how many am I getting? And so, sort of the unit count um, of yeah, this is a ninety count bottle. It's it lasts for thirty days, right? Those kind of things are really important to customers, and you have to balance all of these things. Like I said, you're not just throwing SEO in, you're not just doing value propositions, but you've got to do them all well and typically in under then two hundred characters. And in addition to everything I mentioned at the beginning of all the elements, you also have to consider the truncated um, part of the title, which shows up in mobile or in search results. So we've got to factor all of these things in to create these really well-optimized titles that are going to not only get clicks, but also sales. You know, I just want to emphasize something you said about putting that brand name in front. It becomes really challenging, Shannon, when the brand has three word names or four word names as their brand. You know, I'd like to make yeah. a pitch for one word brand names as being really helpful in general. <laughs> Nike. Yeah. Coke. Yeah. Puma. Right. All those brand names right. are really important. And, and you're right. You know, we tell sellers this all the time. The last moat, the last stand for us brands is building that brand. You absolutely yeah. want to put your brand, uh, you know, first and foremost, you want to tell your brand story with great engaging copy and you want to tell the story of each of those products. So I couldn't agree more with you about putting that brand name in front of the product title. And then yeah. in that last point that you made about the truncated product title for mobile devices is really, really important because, um, you know, you want to front load as much of the important information, especially yeah. that attention capturing or descriptive information so that you can get a higher click through rate and good product title. If your click through rate is low, your main image and your product title are where you should be looking. And I would also encourage everyone, pull up your phone and look at your product and see if the product title, when you search one of your, um, you know, high volume keyword phrases for that's relevant for your product, does it, does it ma make sense? Does it add up? Yeah. Does it compete well with the competitors? So great stuff yeah. on product titles. It's not a lot of characters, but boy, it is very heavily weighted. And I couldn't agree with you more, Shannon. Yep. Next one, bullet points or product features. Tell us a little bit about this. Personally, I try not to read too much of the bullet points. I do love it though, when there's a header that highlights the most important yeah. part in the front. Um, but tell us a little bit about bullet points and, and product features. Yeah, they've definitely evolved. I mean, again, it's so funny. Amazon sometimes fails to embrace the best practices that their 3P sellers have created. And one of those, as you mentioned, is you know, we've seen sort of this best practice um, 
sort of trend over the last couple of years is taking the first few words in a bullet point and making it all caps to call out the benefit. And what I tell a lot of the clients that we work with is, you know, we want the first part of that benefit, you know, the first part of that product feature to, to call it the main benefit. And then the rest of the product feature explains the features that make that benefit possible, right? So we're elaborating on it. Yes, you can include SEO in the product features. Yes, it helps encourage and convince customers that they found the product that they were looking for. Again, we are addressing all of the things that we learned through our research, you know, speaking in the tone and to the audience that we are intending to target. But we're also doing what I call customer pre-service, right? Which is all the things we've learned that customers have questions about our product, we are answering in the product copy. So pre-service, that's that I love iterative. that. I love that. Yeah. Even in the end, customer before they have a chance to ask the question, that's great. That's exactly right. Before they have to call us, let's answer it. Yeah. And if you have customers continuing to ask you the same question, you need to get your listing team, your graphics team on it. And one thing, Jason, is just because you have five product features doesn't mean you just sort of list them off in random order. Right. We will actually order those product features in the order that customers want to see them most. And, and a lot of times it's funny, people sort of do this sort of emulation attempt where they go, okay, well, I see other people sort of doing all caps at the beginning of my product features. So I'm going to try that. And all they do is they highlight or put in all caps, the first few words of the sentence, but it doesn't actually have any meaning with, you know, out of context. Right. And so the question to know if you've done this right is if a customer just reads the all caps portions of your product's features, does it make sense? And if it doesn't, you go back to the drawing. Or board. does it so make you want to read more? Right. Does it, does it make is, you want to read more? Key heading that tells you what you, if you invest your time into reading those three or four sentences in that bullet, is, is does it explain what what's in it? I think that's a really yeah. good point, Shannon. And this is a great example. Amazon Style Guide says you can't use all caps in the product features, and I think this is a gray area because I I read it to you know mean the entire product feature can't be all caps. But it's such a brilliant move on Amazon's part if they were to allow it and say, hey, this is actually a best practice yeah. because it allows customers who are in a hurry to skim and get the information they need quickly. If I was Amazon, I would say not only would I remove that section from the style guide, I would actually educate brand owners and sellers on how to do that better because sellers have discovered that it increases conversion rate. I love it. And so why not why not do what's consumer centric? As Amazon claims to be the most consumer centric company, allow your policies and your style guidelines to support that. So the product features really is about highlighting that benefit at the beginning and then elaborating on the product features that make that benefit possible and answering all those customer pre-service questions so they never have to call you. They never have to reach out for, through buyer seller messaging because they already know the answer. I love it, Shannon. And look, when I'm buying on Amazon, which happens a lot, I also like to see those key features and benefits that are highlighted in the bullet points. I like to see that copy layered on top of the additional images. You know, it's yeah. part of our secret sauce over here at F7. And because, you know, more often than not, people are buying on their phone now. I do it all the time. I did it last night. My daughter came in and said she needed something. And I was like, well, my phone's right here by my nightstand. Let me just let me just order it for you. It'll be here tomorrow. Um, and, yeah. um, you know, what was great about it is I'm thumbing through the images to make sure it's the right thing that she wants is, um, you know, the, the, the product had really great call outs in words mm -hmm. layered over an image. The copy needs to match the story being told by that image. But I find myself yeah. reading copy on images these days more than the bullet points. And if a product doesn't have copy layered on top yeah. of the images, I'm probably moving on to the next one. It's a great point, Jason. And, and we basically call that parallel storytelling. Danielle and I have talked about that a lot of the last few years, that most amateur sellers and brands will put different copy on their infographics and images than they do in their product features and different copy in their A plus content. And really what you want to do is tell the same story <laughs> in slightly different ways because most customers are only going to look at one. You yeah. know, on, on mobile, which by the way, 72% or more of Amazon traffic is now mobile. That is insane. So if your <laughs> images and your copy and everything isn't mobile optimized, you're dying. I mean, this is like a, a trend that if you're not paying attention to, um, companies that pay attention to mobile are going to beat you on Amazon. You know, Chad, so I'm a little bit of a slow learner. So I thought that this was the way I learned. Repetition is the key to learning. But then I learned that everyone does that. And the more, yeah. <laughs> the more you repeat the same message over and over. So I like the strategy a lot of calling out the key benefits 
in the bullet points, duplicating them again in the main images, and then also yeah. triplicating them, if that's a word, I'm not sure that it is, triplicating it's, them in the A-plus details section that we'll get to here in a second. But when you, when you, yeah. jump, when you jump forward in that, that, into that A-plus details section, there's something called the product description that Amazon mm -hmm. offers. But if you're not brand registered and you haven't built out an A plus section, you can see the product description and it's just sort of a paragraph of copy. Tell us a little right. bit about that. And if I've, if I'm brand registered and I've got an A plus details section that's going to cover that and remove that product description, should I still do it and why? Right. Yeah. So it, it is still important. And especially if you're, I mean, if you're not brand registered, you need to, Get a trademark, and you need to get brand registered. But um, one of the articles like, that I wrote, up, years, stop listening to the podcast, go get registered. <laughs> yeah, years ago, years ago, I think probably eight years ago, I wrote a uh, uh, an article on sort of allowed HTML and product descriptions. And basically, now it's it's you can do bold and you can do a line break, so you can actually make that product description beautiful, even if you don't have brand registry or if you're waiting for your trademark to process and you can't get brand registry yet. So bold and line breaks using HTML still work. It is important because number one, if you're, like I said, if you're waiting on A plus content, it's a great way to just, you know, tell, tell again, sort of enhance those features and benefits of the product. Um, but it, it can also be a, an additional, you know, content area for SEO. I think it's much lower weighted than even the product features and certainly than the title, but it is another place that you can put it. So we do a, a product description that has SEO copy, even if we're creating A plus content, which Amazon uses a, a what's called a JavaScript overlay um, so that customers don't see it, but algorithms and search engines do. So still important to have a product description, much less important. Um, if you're going to focus on building your brand, get your A plus content, and now get your premium A plus content, which has been proven to convert even better than regular A-plus content. And that involves having a brand story, which again, got to tell the brand story. So there's a whole brand story section above your A-plus content that you need to have on all of your products. You know, those, those are two newer ones that I want to dive a little bit deeper on is the, is the brand story. Started to see some of those trickle into listings last year in, in 2021. Yeah. Certainly seeing that available. Is it every listing that's available now for the brand story? And how important is that brand story? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's really important because again, Amazon's Amazon knows how to incentivize sellers, right? And, and they can do this maybe in positive ways and not so positive ways. I think, you know, again, Amazon says, look, we have seen that when sellers do X, Y, Z, it converts better. It's better for you. It's better for us. It's better for the customer, yeah. right? So what they do is they dangle the carrot and say, hey, brand, if you do these three things, X, Y, and Z, we're going to give you these benefits over here. And so basically, Amazon says, if you tell this brand story and you use it, then we're going to give you access to this premium A plus content. And that's going to you know, give you access to more features and benefits. So the premium A plus content is incredibly new. Um, and we can provide, you know, some resources on that, um, in our, in our show notes, but it's important just for brand owners to be aware of, Hey, there's something new. You need to get your team on it and be doing something about it or call us and we'll do it for you because it's been shown to dramatically increase conversion rates. So again, Amazon's got the data and they will occasionally come back and say, how do we get our sellers to use this new, you know, what, whatever it is, use this new technology, use this new benefit that we have in order to increase our sales and their sales. And they do that by sort of dangling additional benefits in front of you. Yeah, that, that new premium A++ is very interesting. It kind of sort of expands the graphic capabilities, eliminates a lot of white space. I've always yeah. felt that Amazon's product details page has been quite ugly for a long time. So this, I think, is part of the beautification process. And, you know, some of the numbers that we've seen are quite impressive. Um, a plus certainly increases sales and click through rates and conversions by double digit numbers and even bigger double digit numbers when you go to the premium. And then I just want to go back to the brand story for a second because I agree with everything you're saying here, Shannon. But again, our human beings are hardwired in their DNA to tell stories, to love stories and to hear stories in a way that helps them remember things. And mm -hmm. we, we talked about putting that, you know, some people are you know, resistant to put that brand name in front of their product title. It's the last moat, people. It's the last moat that you have against the China factories and against Amazon Basics itself. So you have yeah. to tell that story. 
Every one of you, every single entrepreneur I've ever spoken to has a really cool story. You know it, yeah. your friends and family know it, tell it, you know, make it cool, tighten it up and tell that story because it will bypass the frontal lobe of the brain, immediately talk to that amygdala feeling center of the brain and they will remember you and they will trust you more and then they will be more likely to add to cart when you tell that story. So, so, so I love that it's available. We're rolling it out all for existing clients and we do it for every new client. I just think it's, yeah. it's really, you know, I, I hate to give Amazon credit where credit's due, but they deserve it for this one for sure. Um, yeah. I, I want to, I want to provide one, one thought about that though. And that is again, if we look at the mobile data, right? The stats, you know, 70 plus percent of mobile traffic. And we're going to talk about storefronts in a second. Storefronts have the ability for you to upload a, a desktop image and a mobile image. A plus content doesn't have that. So Amazon executives, I know we've asked this for some of our brand benefits teams, but if you guys are listening, the ability to create mobile and desktop A plus content would be phenomenal because those really wide banner graphics that do great on desktop, not so much when you shrink, shrink it to a small iPhone screen. So I, I think there's still a lot of opportunity where they're not paying attention to the data and rolling out the features and benefits of things like A plus content in a way that makes sense for all sellers and consumers. So we talked about all these great areas about where copy can be product title, really critically important bullet points, layering that mm -hmm. copy onto what we call infographics, those alt images uh, for every product listing. And then again, telling that brand story with great copy and you have a third opportunity to tell the features and benefits of your product in the A plus and now the premium A plus. What about the brand store? Look, I know that most sales are starting at search on amazon.com. Hell, amazon.com is the search engine for products, period. More US shoppers go to amazon.com to search for a product than they do Google. But, yeah. but the brand store is still important, right, Shannon? Or what kind of copy can you layer in there? What are some of the best practices yeah. for, for maximizing and telling that story in the brand store? Yeah, you know, the brand store is incredibly important. And most sellers and brand owners don't even know what its purpose is or how it should be used. It's just sort of like, it's there, I should use it, I should do something. But I'll, I'll break down a couple of the different, you know, components. Yes, you can get internal traffic if a customer is looking at your product and it shows your brand name. That's now a hyperlink that says view the brand store and they click over. And so you can go into your storefront insights and see where's my traffic coming from? How, how much of it is coming from organic traffic, for example? And that's great because one of the best things about the brand store is it is the only place on Amazon that is yours, meaning there's no competitor ads, there's no competitor products, you're not bombarded by all these other options to buy other things. You know, if you go to your detail page, there's 50, you know, opportunities for people to buy a competitor's product. The brand store is yours. And so this is really your, I almost want to say like your intimate space with your customer, where you can get into a little more detail to tell that brand store story. But even more so, Jason, it is an incredible opportunity to A, provide that customer pre-service for customers who don't understand how to use the product quite well. Because you, with these brand pages, you can have like a how to assemble or how to use page that does nothing but have videos and, you know, detailed steps and graphics that show people exactly how to use the product. You're just not going to be able to do that yeah. on a, a detail page. Yeah. The other thing that you can do, you know, is really cross-selling and upselling. And this is huge because if you look at, you know, from your business reports, you're looking at what are the average number of units that a customer buys for me? And I was going over this with a client a couple of years ago. Average, you know, overall was like 1.03. So basically out of 100 people, three people bought more than one product. But from their brand store, it was like 1.27 or 1.25. I mean, it was mm. much, much higher, wow. which means 20 people out of 100 are buying more than one product. That is huge. Yeah. So if you can increase that average order value, that's epic. And so we we look at the opportunity for the brand store to increase the average order value, to cross-sell products, to sell complementary products, to tell that brand story. And this is where we get to that last phase, which is brand stores are great places to drive external traffic to. So whether you're using Amazon attribution links, you can create custom source tags that you can share on social media. If you want to optimize the heck out of your, you know, Amazon storefront page, you can even drive Google ads to it. And again, track that traffic because that's a really great way to drive Google traffic. So you're getting away from the competition of Amazon, you're driving it from other platforms, and you can track 
the number of clicks, sessions, and revenue from those different streams if you've tagged everything correctly. So the storefront is a great opportunity, but most people are just approaching it as Amazon gave me a place to create a brand store, but there's no strategy behind it. And they're not executing any strategy. It's just sort of there. Yeah. And so hopefully this provides some good insight into you know, for brands to begin thinking about how I use my brand story, uh, brand store effectively to accomplish what my real goal is. Yeah, you know, if you're driving that external traffic to the brand store, you don't have to worry about what happens when you drive it to a product details page where there's 250 other competitive products available one click away on your own details page. Yeah. So you don't have that issue on the brand store. And I think there's yeah. a lot of great opportunity to, to do more of a deep dive in terms of why you created this brand, what's important yeah. about it, what's meaningful about this brand to you, and what is it that helps you get up in the morning as you you know offer these great solutions via products to the Amazon consumer? Um, yeah. You know, we've got some clients that have very complicated products, hard to do a great explanation with a limited space available on a details page. You can do a real deep dive on multiple mm -hmm. tabs in that brand store. So again, Shannon, Absolutely. agree with everything you're saying. You, you, you've got to use that opportunity. You've got to use that space to tell the story, to use great copy, images, video. And again, remember, tune in in a week or two when we're going to have Rick Cesari on to talk about how to do um, video video the right way, author of Video Persuasion. Um, Shannon, uh, this has been a fun episode. You know, sometimes yeah. the nuts and bolts and the basics of, of selling on Amazon escapes folks. You know, we've had sort of a mini series about product availability. Now, you know, we've got one more episode in the can in terms of showing brands how to present their brand in the best possible light in order to get conversions, to build trust with consumers and grow their revenue. I, I really enjoy this. And as always, Shan, you're a wealth of information. Um, you know, just wrapping up here. There's a juggling act that you have to do while riding a unicycle. There's a lot of different elements to copy. First of all, you have to reveal your story, really connect with the consumer on an emotional level, um, and then also tell them what are the best features of your product. But you have to pay attention to the guidelines. You have to work within the rules of the Amazon system because if you don't, your, your listing and your product just won't have any success at all. And then the last thing is story, right? And I think we've tried to weave that throughout the episode here. Being able to, to convey and tell that story to another human being who's looking to either solve a problem or have their life improved by buying your product is not only fun and a great way to drive revenue, it's incredibly meaningful. So don't miss out on opportunities to take advantage of copy. Um, anything else you want to add, Shannon, before we wrap up? No, you know, I just think about, you know, speakers that I've listened to at every, I don't know, conference or event I've ever been to since I was a kid. All I remember, Jason, is the stories. I don't remember anything else that they were trying to teach or t tell me. What I remember and what we remember as human beings is the story. And so, again, I mean, I read this amazing, and I, I wish I could find it. I haven't seen it for a while, but I read this, I read this amazing story about a woman. She created a, a soap product. Her brother was in the military. He was killed in action. And he had always told her, sis, I hope you go do your dream and create this product. She told that brand story. I'm like, I'm almost in tears. I'm reading a detail page. It still chokes me up. I mean, this is the kind of powerful brand story. Your brand story may not be that, but it is something. There's a reason that you created it. And if it's just to make money, as Simon Sinek says, don't fake it. Just say, I'm just here to make money. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, what? Yeah. I, shed, I, I shed a little tear there too, Shannon. Thanks for sharing that story. I want to know what that brand name is when you remember uh, to, support, to support that brand owner. People yeah. oftentimes won't remember what you say, but they'll remember how they make you feel. Make sure your copy yeah. emotes. Uh, if you're writing it and you're not feeling okay. anything, then your consumer probably isn't. That's one of the things I love most about the writing process. That's why yeah. you know I got criticized a lot um, when I wrote the book, The Amazon Jungle, because I wanted to do it in the form of a story because I wanted people mm -hmm. to remember it and I wanted them to feel what I felt as I went through that Amazon seller journey. Um, but it's really important. And um, even though we're just slinging products, we're doing so much more than that. We're offering benefits and yeah. improving folks' lives. So tell that story. Um, and, and Jason, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an unprovoked uh, you know, pitch for the audiobook because I look, I'm a part of Avenue 7. I was acquired. I'm hired full time. Yeah. 
I love working at this company. And I knew a lot of your story. I knew some of the, your story, but not all of it. I don't know a boatload about Amazon. I listened to the, almost the entire book in a weekend. It was so, you know, just, it just gripped me. And it was such a good story that it made it so easy to learn and absorb and glean all the things you had to say. So uh, guys, if you haven't listened to it, go get it. It's available on Audible. Um, and it's such a great listen because not only are you going to hear a great story, but you're also going to learn a ton about Jason's background, Avenue 7 history, and Amazon. So unprovoked. Well, thank <laughs> you, know, you for that, Shannon. I really appreciate it. it. It really is good. You and Rick did an amazing job on it. Well, thank you. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, folks, if you're ready to start growing and protecting your brand on Amazon with a team of experienced Amazon operators, you can visit us at day2podcast.com. That's day the number two podcast.com where you can reach out for a discovery call to talk to Shannon or I, and you can also download a free checklist. Um, it can be used to double check and see if you're doing everything that you can be doing on Amazon or if you're just getting started. It's a great startup checklist. So go to day2podcast.com and check us out. Lastly, if you know anyone else who would gain real value from this podcast, please share it with them. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. Happy selling.